Yes, hello everyone. Uh, greetings from uh, sunny Helsinki here in, in Finland. And uh, uh, my name is Mikko Laplanen. I'm a development manager at the National Library of Finland and uh, head of our Finto team in which we do the Scosmos uh, development here, here at Finland. First of all, I would like to thank Juliana and Don and uh, people at Claring for for arranging this session. It's it's really good to hear that there is uh, interest in in Scosmos, and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing the use case presentations also of uh, uh, the the experiences that people have had with uh, Scosmos elsewhere. So this is a introduction to Scosmos. I will not go into into much detail about uh, specifics at this point, but there should be uh, some room for questions after this presentation. And also, if you have more specific questions, please feel free to contact us uh, after after this webinar. Okay, but getting into the main content of this um, this session, if you are not yet familiar with Cosmos, here is the sort of key ideas in, in one slide. Uh, Scosmos is a web interface and a REST style API for representing and publishing uh, of uh, SCOS based vocabularies. And uh, uh, as I think most of you know, know at this point that uh, SCOS is a, uh, this is a W3C recommendation for for modeling uh, vocabularies and publishing them in 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 the web in the, in linked data, and also uh, uh, behind the Scosmos Scosmos name of of our software. And a good place to start getting to know Scosmos is to go to scosmos.org website, where there's sort of basic information of of Scosmos and links links onwards to, for example, the GitHub project of, of Scosmos, where we do the, do the development of, of it. Uh, some use cases so that you get the sort of basic idea of, of who is using Scosmos and for what. Uh, obviously, there are the organizations who want to publish their, their vocabularies as linked open data. They might be uh, old thesauri that have previously been published in print, or you might have a new sort of uh, semantic web vocabulary that you want to put out there for people to use. And as Cosmos is uh, it's a good way to do that. And on the other end, there are the information professionals, for example, in, in libraries who are doing uh, indexing and annotating work using the concepts of, of uh, a vocabulary made available by by Scosmos installation somewhere somewhere in, in a organization. Uh, obviously you have the vocabulary developers who need to have a sort of uh, visualized representation of a given vocabulary search for the concepts and see the relationships and so on. So on for a given vocabulary, and then then there are the discovery systems providing subject-based information retrieval. Uh, if you use uh, a subject heading vocabulary uh, to index your materials and you want to make them findable, you can you can uh, use Cosmos if you have the vocabulary that has been used available and use the Cosmos API to to query the concepts in a in a given vocabulary. And obviously, there are many other creative ways of using Cosmos, and uh, maybe maybe today we'll learn learn a bit more about about the way it can be used. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are the web interface and the API, and there's a sort of uh, just a few key points about both of those the key features. Uh, we try to provide for the web interface a sort of uh, advanced way of searching and browsing a, a given vocabulary. So uh, in, in our case, there are actually many vocabularies available from our own Scosmos installation called fintoto.fi that I will talk about more, more soon. 
But within a given vocabulary, there are many ways to sort of discover the concepts and uh, properties and information available in a vocabulary. Uh, support for multilingual vocabularies is, is really key element in, in, for us in, in developing Scosmos. Uh, we do vocabulary developments ourselves, and uh, most of the vocabularies available, made available by, by our own team, are multilingual. So, a special atten attention is paid to, to supporting uh, the multilingual use of, of uh, vocabularies. Now, we, obviously, these are linked data vocabularies, and uh, we have uh, many vocabularies that we have linked to, to other vocabularies available somewhere else and we want to sort of support the idea of, of uh, linked data and uh, that you can link your own resources, resources elsewhere and sort of also provide support for that for, for people to visualize and, and uh, follow links to, to elsewhere also from, from Scosmos and from Scosmos vocabularies. And obviously, as uh, Scosmos is used to, for example, by the indexers as sort of a day-to-day -day tool for doing, doing their work, it, it has to be fast and easy to use. And that is something that we try to keep in mind as we develop, for example, new functionalities to Scosmos that we still keep it, keep it uh, at least relatively fast and, and easy to use. So, so uh, those those are sort of basic guidelines for us for us in de developing Cosmos onwards. But in addition to the web interface, we have the API that you can use for integrating your own Cosmos to to other systems. And uh, the API of Cosmos is a read-only interface for the data that you have stored in your own vocabulary server. There are several methods for curing the data available. There are global methods, uh, vocabulary specific, specific methods, and also concept specific methods. So sort of many, many ways to explore the concepts with the API also. And most of these methods return the data as, as JSON-LD. And we have this, uh, Swagger description or interactive documentation that that comes with the API. Also, and there's a there's a picture of uh, of the Swagger documentation there in the on the right hand side. Just a few screenshots we can we can look uh, looks Cosmos more in detail shortly, but. But here are some of the key elements that we have available for exploring the concepts within a vocabulary. So uh, within a specific vocabulary view, you have the search bar there with the uh, autocomplete functionality. So you can start typing and it will suggest, suggest uh, a specific concepts uh, starting with, uh, with letters you have typed there. And um, also, if you have multiple vocabularies available from your own Scosmos installation, you can use the search bar at the front page of Scosmos. This is our own Scosmos Finto.fi, and there's the search bar in the front page from which you can search concepts from all the vocabularies available. Actually, we have in, in our own Scosmos Finto uh, almost 50 vocabularies available. So if someone is looking for for a specific term in all those vocabularies, you can you can do it from the search at the front page. And uh, the concept page is the sort of uh, main information page about uh, uh, the main information of a one particular chosen concept. So you can see here the labels and the relationships to other concepts and the hierarchical structure and uh, you have the URI for this specific concept and this is a place if you want to uh, download the data of, of a given concept you can do, do it from this page and here you can also see the links to other other vocabularies there in the lower part of, of that page. 
So for example, this is uh, why I saw the general Finnish ontology at our own Finto service. And uh, those concepts are linked to the Library of Congress subject headings and you can, you can see the matching concepts from, from there. Then we have the hierarchical view. In, in our case, many of our vocabularies have a sort of complete hierarchical structure. In the case of YSO here, there are about uh, 30,000 concepts and they're all arranged in a one complete hierarchy. And you can use the left-hand side browsing uh, bar for, for exploring the hier hierarchical structure and also at the concept view you can see the uh, the specific path of, of, of a concept in this case the cognitive science. How is the whole whole path of, of that concept within this this vocabulary? Then we have the alphabetical index yet another view to a concept of, of a vocabulary. Uh, you can browse them, browse them, browse them here. Here, uh, according to the first letter of, of the pref label of the concept, and also the alt labels are are viewed viewed in this uh, this view. And then, if you have these uh, groupings of of concepts, uh, for example, we have this. Uh, thematic index in YSO in which all of the concepts are part of one or more uh, thematic groups. You can browse those groups also in, in, in this, this view of the vocabulary. Now I think there are uh, some comments coming, but I think uh, is it good to take those comments after the presentation or? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I will move, move forward. Okay, yes. Yes, yes. And, and you are here. I'm, I'm also answering them as, as Mikko is holding the presentation. Yeah, yeah, we have some of our technical team online also. So if you have a specific uh, technical questions um, in mind and we have time to take those, so I will direct them to, to the people of our technical team. Yeah, thank you, Joali. <laughs> and um, this Cosmos uh, interface uh, is available in many languages. We at the Finso team develops Cosmos uh, uh, interface in, in Finnish, in Swedish, and in English. So we are responsible for those translations. But since there are many users around the world who need, need to have the user interface in, in their own language, there are many many uh, translations available and I think this is this is the current list of translations you can you can look through the code and see see the available ones uh, but there are uh, interface languages currently English Finnish Swedish Norwegian German Spanish French Italian Polish Danish Dutch and we actually just got the Russian translation I think it was in the spring and there are also Chinese and Arabic translations, but I'm not sure how complete they are at this moment. But uh, but uh, as you can see from the from the screenshots here, there are there are some. I think this is Chinese, the language there, available. So so quite a few uh, languages available already, and we always welcome new translations. So if you have a need. Post Cosmos in your own country, and there are no uh, interface translation available. Please feel free to contribute. But uh, as I said, we are we are responsible for uh, making Cosmos available in in English, Finnish, and Swedish. Okay, then there are uh, widgets or, or plugins that you can also have. These are actually separate to GitHub uh, repositories. So, so if you go through the Cosmos code, you might not find information about these, but the documentation points you uh, to, to the repositories where you can find information about these, these plugins and, and extensions that we have currently. First of all, the, here's the... Uh, Finna widget, which is a view to a uh, Discover platform. Uh, 
where our own vocabularies has been used to index index cultural heritage materials. It's it's the biggest biggest uh, user interface for searching searching materials of libraries and museums and archives and so on. So if you want to find information uh, about national libraries, that is the concept open here. Uh, see, for example, museum pictures about them. We sort of give this snippet and view to the materials available in Finland. You can you can uh, click the link and go browse those materials in Finland. Finland with this feature. And, and I know that there are other uh, Cosmos insta installations elsewhere that provide this sort of uh, way to to uh, browse the materials uh, available in these these sort of discovery systems elsewhere also. But this is all sort of way way of doing it. And this is something quite new. We made this uh, Wikipedia widget came out I think last year. Uh, this is based on the Wikidata links that we have available in some of our vocabularies. Currently, the YSO places are linked to Wikidata, and we are also linking linking our general Finnish ontology, that is the main sort of general vocabulary that we have available to Wikidata. And uh, we will make the Wikipedia widget available there also. So this basically gives you view to the uh, Wikipedia article that is that is linked to the Wikidata concept that is then linked to, to the concept in, in YSO places in this case. And you can browse the Wikipedia article here or you can you can click the link and go on to Wikipedia and, and uh, see the information there. Okay, so those are some of the sort of basic uh, features that we have available, but if you look under the hood, a little bit about the technical details. This is the only slide, so so if you're not into these kinds of things, don't worry. Uh, but we will give more information about the technical side also, if you if you if this is something that you would like to know more about. Uh, but the basics are that Cosmos is implemented using PHP, and uh, the web interface is with tweak templates and for example jQuery and JS tree tree there also an easy RDF for the Spark Girl and RDF data access. So uh, in 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 just uh, sort of basics if you're thinking of setting up your own Cosmos what you would need for that. Obviously you should have your uh, own SCOS vocabulary, da vocabulary data in, in SCOS formats available. You need a server with uh, support for Apache and PHP, and then uh, Sparkle 1.1 complete RDF triple store. So uh, uh, obviously there are many triple stores available, but we personally use the Yena Fuseki, and that is something that we recommend for others also, because that is that is something that we know that will work with Cosmos. And um, more info from uh, for setting up your own Cosmos you can find from the documentation we have available at the Cosmos GitHub uh, repository. There's this install tutorial that that gives you more detail about how to set up your own own Cosmos. Okay, and as mentioned, uh, we develop. Cosmos at the National Library of Finland, but with an active user community from around the world. We are sort of uh, responsible for uh, developing Cosmos for our own needs uh, in the first place. We have the Fintor.fi that I showed you, that is our own Cosmos installation and making uh, Fintor.fi available and, and uh, usable to our, our users is sort of um, our main main concern in developing Cosmos, but uh, there are several users uh, outside of, uh, of Finland who are also using uh, using Cosmos, have their own installation, and we are doing our best to develop Cosmos further with those, those users elsewhere also. So we welcome all the contributions directly to our GitHub 
in the form of issues and and also any code that you might have we we would we always like to go through and and see if that is something that we should have in the sort of main uh, main cosmos uh, cosmos that we have available and we have some uh, developers elsewhere outside of finland who are doing sort of um, more or less uh, steady cosmos development work also but the main team is is at the national library of finland and um, we have been developing cosmos uh, and uh, related tools uh, from 2013 in the national library the first version of cosmos was published in 2014 but uh, many of the sort of foundational work for Cosmos and uh, linked data vocabulary work that we do currently at the Finto team uh, has been uh, laid in, in uh, the semantic web related research projects that have been going on in, in Finland in the University of Aalto and University of Helsinki from the early 2000s. So there, there's a strong tradition of uh, research work behind behind what we do at the National Library currently with Cosmos and with Finto. Just a few words about Finto so you know a little bit about the background. Uh, Finto is this, this uh, centralized service for, for linked open data vocabularies for the whole of Finnish uh, public sector. So uh, although many of uh, our users are from uh, libraries and archives and museums, this uh, so-called GLAM sector, there are many, many other users also of, of uh, Finto in, in Finland, for example, ministries and uh, different kind of public administration organizations. So there's a quite, uh, quite big uh, use, user base for, for Finto in Finland. And uh, there are millions of users yearly. And I think at last we, are, we had uh, 32 million API calls to our own uh, Cosmos API. So it's uh, it's it's under heavy use in Finland, and as mentioned, we started this development in 2013 at the National Library, and the sort of main objective behind the work that we do in Finto is to sort of further the semantic interoperability of of the public sector data and and systems systems in Finland, and we do uh, the technical development that Cosmos uh, is is part of, but we also develop the vocabularies themselves so here's a view to the finto finto service in whole and you can see from this that uh, sort of where the cosmos development sits in this whole so we have a team at finto of about a uh, little bit under 10 10 persons and some of them are more more involved in doing the technical development and others in doing the vocabulary work but we we try to work as a sort of tight team and and all, always uh, when doing the technical development try to keep in mind that the needs of the vocabulary developers and users so so it's uh, this uh, symbiosis of uh, technical development and, and vocabulary, vocabulary development that we do in, in Finto. Uh, but a little bit more about the actual Cosmos team at Finto. We have uh, three developers. We have a Scrum Master. We are trying to do the development uh, in, in Scrum uh, sprints, in, uh, in uh, monthly sprints and um, sort of follow these agile methods of, of doing the development. Uh, we have a product owner that is myself um, and then we have these three vocabulary developers who are uh, involved in for example testing the new versions of Cosmos that we are about to publish at the do they do the new version and feel the needs of the of the actual users and so on? So it's a tight combination of the technical development and vocabulary development that we do at Finto. And uh, although we try to be relatively agile in in the development, we have this uh, yearly uh, roadmap. So uh, the idea is that we have a rough outline for for this Cosmos development 
for a specific year and this is sort of outline of of the development but uh, if there are new things coming and uh, new needs from the users or some serious bugs we try to get them in the development least as soon as possible so so not try to be as as agile as, as possible in in developing the software and obviously, as you know, uh, because of the theme of the whole session, Cosmos is open source. It's available under the MIT license and the development is done at GitHub. So anyone can browse the issues at GitHub and, and, uh, and, and see what is going on over, over there. Okay, so as mentioned, we uh, we at the National Library do the de development of Cosmos uh, uh, with uh, with Finto.fi specific, specifically in mind, but there are many users of Cosmos around the world, and there are some some examples here. Uh, for example, UNESCO is using Cosmos for publishing their own UNESCO thesaurus. There's the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN uh, who publishes Agrovoc uh, using Cosmos. The European Space Agency has been working with their own Cosmos installation for for a while now, and uh, I think it should be online already. And then there are several uh, universities, uh, research projects, and uh, uh, public administration institutions around the world who are using Cosmos. And actually, we are not even aware of all the Cosmos installations that there are. We have a, a list you can see. Unfortunately, this isn't finished, but you can you can follow the li links here. But there is a few of the notable users that we know of, and and there's UNESCO's and so on, and universities, and there and there are, for example, the uh, legislative vocabularies of the state of Luxembourg, for example. So quite quite many different kind of use cases that that we are aware of. So, and uh, as we go through um, searching for uh, Cosmos installations from time to time, we always come up with new new installations. And so obviously, uh, those who want to be more in contact with us when doing the development usually ask questions about Cosmos at the Cosmos users web forum. There's a link to the forum, and there's the sort of uh, place for for discussion uh, Cosmos if you want to do it outside of uh, for example the github issues uh, the idea is, is there that the users can can support themselves and we will support the other users uh, and also let let the users know of of new new versions of Cosmos that are coming coming and uh, and so on so for discussion about Cosmos please see the see the uh, users, Cosmos users web forum. And here there are uh, some examples of, of, uh, of different Cosmos installations around the world. Obviously, this is the Finto.fi. Uh, this is the UNESCO Thesaurus, so you can see it's quite quite similar to, to the sort of clean Cosmos installation with different colors, for example. Um, here's a friends institute who have uh, put their own Cosmos installation and this is notable for example uh, because of the fact that they have this uh, view to the uh, history of a of a given concept and a and a uh, vocabulary so if version history uh, is important you can you can have a view in these Cosmos installations to the different versions of a different concept. But uh, why this is uh, interesting is that this is not a sort of uh, Cosmos feature that we have developed. So it's something that they have added on their own. So it goes to show that you can extend Cosmos based on your own user needs. Uh, here's a quite new Cosmos installation of the French, uh, French institution. Uh, it is called Datu, and I think this is a good, good example of, um, of the fact that uh, although this is the same as Cosmos, they have done quite a bit of uh, visual customization to it, and it looks quite different from, from for example, our own Finto. 
but uh, the basic basic uh, functionalities are of course the same as this cosmos but uh, goes to show that if you if you want to put the effort in you can really make it look like your own and uh, this is uh, i think quite quite nice example of a highly customized cosmos user interface uh, then there are uh, different examples. I will go these through quite quickly because we are running out of time. But these are the last slides. So um, the current status of Cosmos development, we are currently on version 2.7. 2.0 came out in, in September 2018. Uh, we have 2.8 coming this month with some uh, accessibility improvements. Uh, so stay tuned for for that release uh, and some some uh, bits bigger uh, feature that we have under development right now is uh, for example the updated system for new concept suggestions so that if people who are using a, a vocabulary want to suggest changes to that vocabulary or suggest new concepts to it we will have a sort of uh, new widget for for that and then a whole separate systems for for discussion on of, of new concepts we have a map widget coming for vocabularies that have uh, geographical information like coordinates and and so on we are working on on uh, making our support for classifications uh, even better we have quite a few classifications already at finto but uh, as you know, classifications that have uh, concepts or classes with, with numbers are a bit different than, than the traditional thesaurus with, with, with works with, uh, with terms, terms for specific concepts. We have, th have been thinking about uh, doing a, some sort of advanced search functionality and, and something that we have really been working on the past uh, past year or two are the automatic indexing extensions for for our own Finto service, and uh, this is this is the last slide I will show you briefly. Oh, uh -huh. I can't open this, but it's the ai.finto.fi that is our latest latest extension to our own Cosmos, and and basically what this is is uh, automatic indexing tool. Uh, that has a tool called ONIF behind it that is also developed in the National Library of Finland and, and you can use this for uh, for automatic indexing of, of text materials and it will give you uh, Finto concepts as, as answer, answers to, to the indexing so it's integrated quite closely to the to the Finto that is our own Cosmos installation uh, uh, what looms in the future, this is the last slide, uh, we will keep this uh, development as active as we can as Cosmos is currently part of the sort of permanent services of the National Library of Finland, so we will keep developing it based on the user needs and also, also in, in close cooperation with the international user base. Uh, we have some long-term development themes here mentioned accessibility, uh, better support for classifications, improved scores Excel support. Uh, and we've been thinking of doing the user interface, interface from sort of design perspective, uh, new entirely, but these are sort of uh, things, uh, things that uh, we will at some point in the future focus on. But uh, we would really like to hear, of course, the users that we have online now as of to what sort of direction would you like to see Cosmos developing into. And, and as always, we will, we will welcome all the contributions to, to Cosmos in, in, in the form of code, code also. And, and you can see the whole Cosmos backlog at GitHub. There's the link there, a sort of organized list of all the all this Cosmos issues. So. So there you can see the sort of themes that we have have within the whole whole uh, issue base that we have at the Cosmos GitHub. Thank you very much.